think about the last time you built a form in React. So did you end up copying maybe a previous form and taking those fields and kind of changing them a little bit and overall feeling like there was a ton of redundancy in boilerplate around adding new forms? Because that's how I felt for quite a bit and lately I've been really trying to improve my form workflow. It was always annoying whenever I needed to create a new form and I felt like I was just doing the same thing over and over again. So lately I have gone to a place where I'm quite happy with how I'm doing forms and whenever I need to add a new form it's actually super easy and it feels super robust at the same time. So in this video we're going to go over exactly how I've been making forms and the strategy that I've been really liking. So this is the form library they've been using. It's called Formic and I really like this library and you should definitely try it if you haven't. But I don't think it's this library is so much, um, you know, you have to use this library. I think the strategies that this library uses are very nice though. And they've taught me how to abstract some of the boilerplate that is involved with building forms. And so no matter what you're actually doing in React, I would recommend building some utilities similar to how Formic works to kind of make your workflow very clean. So we're going to be taking a look at specifically, and even though a lot of people I see using Formic, I don't see them use custom fields in Formic. And I think that is where you get like a super nice uh, supercharge and uh, it helps a lot. So let's take a look at what that actually means and looks like. So first off, the thing that I like to do is to make these new components, which are like called form components, or I call them form field components. And basically you take a UI component you have, and this can be any type of UI component. Um, as long as it, you know you assume it's going to be some sort of user input sort of thing. What I mean is it can come from a different uh, UI libraries. Like for example, I'm using Material UI here but you could use a UI that you built yourself, you wrote CSS for, or it could be a different boilerplate or whatever. And basically you hook up these custom fields, the UI and how you can make that UI custom for so it works for any form. So, so what do I mean by that? Well, take a look at this text form that I have here. That I have here. Uh, so here we have uh, a text field done rendering from Material UI. And what I'm doing is I'm mapping the things that you need for the form to this UI piece. So first off, I am doing dot, dot, dot field here. So field is something that Formic is going to give us. And if I click on this, we can see that we're going to be passing the name to this field or to this component, uh, the on change, the value, and on blur. So these are all the fields that we need to basically get input from the UI and uh, save that in the state. I'm also passing in some error text. So this could be, for example, if we want to add some validation to our form, this is a standard way that I want to display the error text uh, for text fields. And uh, this is just in Formic, the way you can get form errors. So in this case, I'm seeing whether the user has actually even touched the field. And then I'm also getting the errors. And this is how you do it in Formic. And so I display that as helper text in this text field. So as you can see, I'm basically mapping these things that I'm getting from Formic from the props uh, into my UI component. And so I've done it in a generic way. You'll notice nothing here is really specific to say a username field or an email field. And so now I can use this all over the place in all my forms. And this is not just specific to say text fields. So for example, here is a more complex one where I'm using a select form field. All right, so here I have a form control wrapping the entire thing. And I have a label that I'm displaying at the top of my select field. And then here you can see that I am mapping through some options. Right, so I'm just displaying a list of menu items for my select list. And so I can pass in some options to this field. And again, you'll notice that I'm doing dot, dot, dot field on the select. And so it's going to handle um, updating the values whenever someone makes a change in the select field. And then again, I'm just showing where you actually display error text for a select field. 
And uh, just to show you, this is, it doesn't have to be uh, specific types of UI pieces. You can also map this to say a slider or whatever type of UI piece you want for forms. So here I have something that doesn't cleanly map. So for example, when I was showing you, we could pass in the field name on blur, on change value. A slider doesn't really have those things. And so there's no really way to just pass them directly in here. So you don't see me doing that with this particular slider. Um, instead, what I'm doing is I'm listening for the on change and then I'm calling form.setFieldValue. So here you see me uh, a different way of mapping the formic props to the UI piece. So now the UI piece here, in this case the slider, um, I know that I have to do the on change here is how I get the new value and then I call this to update my form piece. So those are three examples of form fields that you could build. And again, you can pretty much add whatever you want here. And now I want to show you how easy it is once you've built out these different form pieces. And for example, where the error text goes and how to update them. Uh, assembling a form is very easy now. Um, so here I have a app and I'm just going to start building my formic form here. So we're going to use the render prop. And here I'm going to bake a new form. So I'm going to import both these from Formic. And then I'm going to display my first field. And I'm going to say a name of username. And here I just pass in the component I would like to render the username. So here I'm going to say text form field. And I'm just going to import this from Formic as well. And then here I'm going to say the initial values for my form is going to be a username, it's going to be an empty string, and then on submit. And I'm just going to just leave my on, sub, on submit blank for now, uh, not going to worry about that. Alright, so you'll notice right here, this is just the start of my form, but already I one of the nice things when you use a custom field like this is I do not need to map, for example, what the current value is and how the value changes or do it pass in an on change or handle change. All that's done under the hood for me and I explained how that works in this uh, text form field. So now if we go to my field over here I can see my form field and I can you know start typing and we have the start of our form. Now I can pass in some other props for example a label just like I want if I want to pass any other prop down to my uh, text input field for material UI I can and I can get that working as well here. Now the cool thing is this also works with validation. So what I usually use for validation is yup. So here I'm going to create a new schema. So how yup works is you define a schema with requirements um, that you want the object to uh, match. So for example I would like to say the username is a string, it's required, and it needs to be at least three characters long. Um, and then here I can pass in my schema, validation schema, to this uh, Formic. So Formic has a specific integration with Yup, so it's very easy for me to just pass the schema directly in here. Note, if you're worried about the size of of validation libraries. Yup is definitely not the smallest. So if you care about bundle size, you can probably find some smaller ones than Yup. And you can actually have a custom validate field for Formic and you can get that working with whatever uh, validation library you like. But here I just pass in my schema and then I can now uh, display errors for this username field without me needing to add anything else. All right, so let's see, I'm gonna say be and I'm just not going to complete it and we can see a username must be at least three characters and it's a required field so you can see I've now mapped the error to this text field without explicitly doing it right I've set it up already in my text form field so this in my opinion is a very nice thing to set up is these reusable form components so now just as easily as I added one field I can now set up another one Right, and I want this to be a form field.
can add some validation. And I'm just going to wrap these in a div. That way they drop to a new line. And let's say we want to use our two other form fields as well. So for example, I'm going to do age. And you'll notice the names here match up with the initial values up here. So I'm going to make this a slider form field. And then I'm going to do, let's say, pet. It's going to be a select form field. Pass in my options. So the label is going to be dog. Value is going to be dog. And let's have cat as another option. All right, so we have added our four fields. And now we can go check out our form. We have our nice material UI components rendered here. We can check them out. And again, we got validation on them running automatically. Um, so we can see we have to have some required fields. So just like take a minute to appreciate um, how reusable this is once we have it set up. Right, I simply just said uh, what the name of this field is and a label that I wanted for it. And everything else is handled for me. It knows how to display the data for a slider form field and map the data between the UI piece and the form itself. And so it just abstracts that all, all away from me. So I just have to focus on setting up what I want my form to look like here and what fields I have and then setting up a validation that I want for my form, and of course, what I want it to do when it submits. So it now takes the burden off of, for each field, having to connect everything together. So I highly recommend you try setting up something like this for yourself, or taking a look at Formic, it will help out your workflow, and definitely check out the custom components that you can build like this in Formic. So I'm gonna put up this code on GitHub if you'd like to check out uh, it and give it a try.